Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and in this episode we're going to be taking a little look at this Ryobi chainsaw which my friend Luke um, gave me. Um, he's picked it up from somewhere else and he said um, if I get it to run or what have you it's mine I can have it so that's cool. I've still got to do his uh, HS45 hedge trimmer for him he wants that up and running before the 17th of December before he's back from holiday um because he's got a few jobs for it so i've ordered the parts for that that's the service kit that's on its way so i'll get on this ryobi as you saw me in my last video with a steel chainsaw it was nothing wrong with that from what i could see at all i think it was purely the fuel he was trying to put it he didn't put it through enough so that's what it is but today we get down dirty and we check out this ryobi um all i know is so far is that the container is absolutely full of oil um where apparently he said there's, there was an oil container in there which has fallen over so it's not actually got an oil leak so he said don't don't get confused with that so i'll get it out of the box i'll put it on the bench we'll have a bit of a clean up so we know what we're dealing with and then we'll go from there so without further ado let's get down and dirty then let's check out this ryobi chainsaw right so we're all rocking and rolling now this is going to be mine to either keep or sell or to do what I like with um, once I've uh, finished with it if I can get it to run now I'm sort of hoping <laughs> it come from the same person that owned the steel um, because if it did um, then there's no reason why it shouldn't just fire straight up um, it's a 2009 model saw but it's just not been very well loved at all so I'm gonna take a bit of time just to take it apart clean it up before I even start to fire it because it is absolutely full of oil gunk and what have you and the tray is, is the same I have to get some kind of degreaser in there to remove all this oil and stuff so just want to spend about five ten minutes um, of my day just um, cleaning this off uh, to the best that I can I might even remove the pull cord assembly which is some torx bits one here one there one there one here uh, just to remove the covers off of it um, give them a good clean down because there's all sorts of wood chips in here and, and that's not going to help towards it running either so I'm going to get that done first before I even start to fire it up um, I know it's a bit backwards but uh, I'm going to give it half a decent chance and uh, from what I can see with all these stuff in here the filters probably will be plugged as well so I want to get a good chance of uh, trying to start where I can so let me get some bits over I'll turn the camera off and uh, or put it on time lapse and I'm just going to go through and uh, just start to strip it down and then uh, have a bit of a clean up Right, so that's most of it taken apart. <clears throat> Only thing I can't seem to do is take off this ridiculous um, brake cover to remove the pull cord because the bolt is spinning. That should just come adrift. But I'll try to apply some pressure behind, behind the nut itself behind the bolt to try and force it back um, and it just will not come which is particularly annoying that just does not want to come out oh I see the captive nut is no longer captive that's what I've just spotted so uh, it's going to be quite small, be about an 8mm, something like that. Six. Is it smaller than that? It is. That's an 8 let me grab a six mil and I'll be back. I think it's actually going to be a seven. Yep, 
yeah, that's got it. And let's turn it, I'm gonna drop that nut and I am. If I tip it that way, it might keep it. Should separate from the uh, from a break. So everything is just covered in grease. I can't get a purchase on anything. That's it. Now that should pop off of there. I'm hoping there should be nothing keeping that on. Here it comes. Come on, come to Papa. That's it. And literally, that, that's why. Look at that, absolutely covered in stuff. And that's why I wanted it out. Inside's not too bad. The core looks pretty good. The flywheel looks pretty good, but uh, nothing's nothing's a lot of lot of moisture gone in here. Um, it's got a. It looks like I've got a spark plug arrest. I should be taking that out as well. Um, give it a bit of a clean. Um, so I'm going to give us a, a clean off, a blow off of a compressor, tidy that right up. And so there's just so much gunk in here and it, and it is just oil. Um, so I'm going to get all that off. Um, and then we get a bit of a happy birthday, a bit of a clean up and I'll come back. Right, so I've just cleaned that up. Um, that's all now clean, um, or a lot better than what it was. And um, I've got to just shoot off because my little Riley boy is not having a very good day today. So I'll have to come back to this video in a bit later on. Um, I'll go and pick him up from school, so um, I'll be back a bit later on. Okay, just got Riley boy, he's back from school. And uh, I've had a bit of a clean up here as well, that's all been cleaned up. So now we can now fit this all back together. If I can remember how it all goes. That's gotta sit up in there for a start. sits in there like so. I want to pinch that core lead. That's all got to sit in there and then wind these through. Plastic always has the, the wider threads and metal always has the thinner threads. That's if, if you get stuck that's where they all go. So I'm just going to start to put this back together. They're all the same size, so we can go in either hole, makes no difference. Just make sure it all lines up as it should do. all on. It's not quite sat. Sat down right there. That should be on the outside of that bow looks at it. Like that. And that going there better. So already the saw is looking a bit better. I want the top, which I'll put over here. That one's clean as well, that's absolutely filthy. So I'll give that a quick clean as well. Right, that's one now been cleaned up as well, pretty well. So that can all now go back into place. 
before I do that, I want to hook up that last uh, little tiny six mil bolt, isn't it, or something? Seven mil nut. It's going to be particularly tricky. So let's get that half wound in first. shouldn't lock off because it should be a nut on the back of it that's it and then I just want to get this little six mil or seven mil nut on the end of that which is going to be no easy thing in itself I'll get a pair of forceps onto it just to hold it in place Whilst I manipulate it's gonna be backed out slightly. And then put over the top of it. I think that's got it. If not, I'm gonna drop it. No, that's got it. And change it over for a little spanner. Okay, happy with that. Brakes on, nothing moves. Brakes off, chain moves lovely, so brake works fine. Put the fuel cap back on, which is good. The oil one back on. So, if this all you might be saying is a bit of a waste of time, don't know if the machine works, but I just can't work with machinery that's just covered. And stuff. Got to have a relatively clean environment to work in. So that can now go back on. They should all have the nuts in there, which I need. That all sits onto there. Screw that down. That's got like a little keeper in there. Would be good if it sat in there like that. Right, let me screw in down and I'll come back. Right, that's that all screwed down. And as you, you can agree, that's uh, so much better looking already. Let's turn it round. Oh, it's got one of these, one of these silly tightening up things on it. So I'm not overly keen on. If I can even remember how to undo the, do the thing. Um, unlock it is that way, lock it is that way. I don't want to move. There it goes. Turn the brake off. That should all just fall apart on me. There it goes. Look at that in there. Absolutely full of stuff. So that's got to be cleaned as well. And all that's got to be cleaned. So a bit more cleaning to do. And then we might be in a situation where we actually start to try and fire this thing up. But the, uh, all the clutch looks good. Oh, the cog, sorry. There's no drum on this. Um, sorry, the, the drum is here. And the brake works properly. It's grabbing it. So let me put the brake on and go back to the bench. Give us a bit of a clean up. So we can actually see, uh, see what's going on. Literally gonna put some petrol on it, clean it all up, blast it all off, clean the chain up, clean the guard up. So it's got all, you know, it's all as it should be. So give us five and I'll come back. Wow, dirty, dirty, dirty. That's what that was. So that's all I've been blown off. Got most of it off. Um, but it was, yeah, particularly dirty, oily. Um, I just can't work like that, so. 
it's got to be clean and all of this stuff is just going to in, you know introduce problems later on so it wants another clean but uh, just so i can see what's going on that'll have to do i've cleaned the um the side of the engine too that's all done let's give the bar a quick look at the bars has got bits and pieces on it so that shouldn't be too bad let's just wipe that off get rid of some of it two ticks And to be fair, the bar actually, I would say, is actually in good nick. It's not done a great deal of work. As this. Looking at the bar, there's nothing on the top edge because no one's ever rotated the bar anyway, which you should do. Um, so there's not a lot of wear on that. So happy with that. All right, let's put it back together. And let's see if we can't put some petrol in it. I can tune the carburetor here as well, which is quite cool. Um, but hopefully I shouldn't have to. So let's tip her up on her side, or the best I can. And I'm gonna rotate the bar. That's the way that looks like the bar's been running the right way up. So I'm gonna rotate the bar so it's upside down. Stick that on. About there. The old chain, which has now got a couple of chain knots in it, which can be quite tricky, tricky to get out. But once you know how to get them out, they're not generally too bad. Just a bit of twisting like that does it, and we want it to go that way around would be good. So it's on the right way around. Put it on top of the bar first, onto the sprocket, run it down somewhere there. Now, I'm not a fan of these um, little saws. I don't like the way the tension. Because the risk is still very real if the chain comes off. The risk is very real still. I've had a few instances myself of a chainsaw in my days. So I know exactly what they're capable of doing if not treated properly. Okay. Let's try and fit this menagerie back on. I'm assuming that goes into there somewhere. And that must grab. That's starting to grab it. There's a bit of tension in there, which is good. I don't know if you can slacken that off. Uh, minus. Should be that way. Yeah, slacken it off. Okay. So let me scrub down a bit more. Let's do that up. I can go slacken that right off. Just put any tension on it. Yeah, there it goes. Let's put it, okay, I've got some more forces working against me here. That's going down there. That a bit more. That's not too bad. I'd like to be a bit more than that though, if I can get it. The chain may have stretched over time. As long as it don't come off and I'm revving it up, that's the main thing. Oh, nick that up tight. I don't. I just don't trust them. The chain's not too bad. I've seen worse chains but I can't get no more on that in a minute so um, well that's on should we go for a fire up so we can't get out of it let's take that off the o-ring's not brilliant let's put a bit of fuel in it and watch it leak out the bottom now Bit of fuel. Which is good. Oop, a bit fuller than I thought it was going to be. Poke that in there. Do that nice and tight so hopefully that won't leak on me. Which I'm suspecting it's going to because they generally do. Let's just 
tidy that up, set that down for a minute, see what we get. Any leaks come out of it. And true to fashion, yeah, that's leaking out of there. Which they do, because the O-rings go on these as well. I don't have any spare. What we got? Oh yeah, that look. Absolutely knackered. I'll just try and find a new O-ring for that, but it'll do for task. I only just want to run it up, see if it actually runs. And I can look at getting another cap for it or another ring if they do them. So I need to be quite quick because um, I don't want to lose all this fuel and spill it everywhere. So let's get over to the bench and we'll try and fire it up. Right, I'll put a bit of oil in there as well, just to try and keep it lubed. And we're gonna go for a fire up now. So I have got a, we'll have a fuel leak on it, but I need to get some new caps for it. They are renowned for um, doing that if you leave the fuel in. It's not like a cork insert, so I need to try and find a part for that. One for both would be good, so that is gonna leak. But as long as I'm quick enough, we should be okay. Do we have a priming carburetor? Yes is the answer. So I'm just gonna push some clean fuel through. It's not leaking horrendously, but it is leaking. Right, plenty of that. Let's turn that on. Uh, bit of choke. It's not automatic choke off, so a bit of choke. Uh, that's it, isn't it? Brake on would be good. Yeah, can't lock the throttle off. Done, done. Right, see how we get on. That fired. I'm taking the fuel back out of it, um, but actually, that's not too bad. That runs okay uh, for what it is. Um, it wants a bit of a service up, which I can do, and that's now worth doing. Beforehand, it wasn't. Um, let's just try and fire it again. That's warmed up a smidge. Uh, to turn it on, no choke. <laughs> Happy, happy, happy. And Pete, that's another chainsaw I've got running. Okie doke, so that's another chainsaw up and running. So um, that's the Ryobi, I'm not quite sure what, what, what model it is or what make it is, what have you, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but in all fairness, it's not a bad little saw for what it is. Um, don't forget it's low end. Um, I think it's even lower than a, than a bow saw. Um, they're okay, but just for a hobby saw, just for around the garden stuff, brilliant for that. Um, for out on, out on the job, nah, not for that. Um, so I've got to get a new cap for that or um, a new insert ring for it. If anyone wants to have a look for me to see if you can get me the O-rings, I'll tell you what model it is. Um, it's a Ryobi, that I do know. I'll tell you what it is. It's a Ryobi um, RCS 3535A. If anyone can find me the link to where I can get, preferably just the insert for the fuel cap, that'd be good. If not, find me the links for the, um, the actual caps itself. I want both from the fuel and the oil. Um, there's no point just doing one. But uh, that little saw, actually, for little, for little, uh, little chainsaw, it's okay, isn't it? I do. Um, and Pete, 
that's another one running. So I've had the home light, the steel, and the little uh, Ryobi all running now, Pete. Come on, Pete, you're behind. Let's try and keep up. I think um, everyone put a uh, put a thumbs up if they think Pete should do a video on his chainsaw that he's having problems with. Um, like to see you get that thing up and running properly, Pete. That'd be brilliant. If not, come on down to the mixed mower shack and we'll have a look at ourselves. So anyway, that's a Ryobi, um, all up, all running. It now wants a service, but I shan't service it until I can find the parts for the uh, fuel cap and oil filler. Once that's done, it'll be getting the full service and uh, got to clean the, clean the basket out. So that's all good. Um, and that'll be um, up for next year. It's missing a few bits, just some tools in there and bits and pieces, but that's not in there. So um, I'll give you a chain and sharp and all that sort of lovely good stuff and that'll be up and ready, so that'll be good. In fact, I have got a silver birch here, so I want to put the home light to test when I get a new uh, cap for that one that's on order as soon as the seller comes back on holiday um, so I'll nip them up with that and uh, we're good to go so that's it that's as far as we are apart from the uh, pro performance strimmer as I keep mentioning uh, that's 24 pound for new one of them I ain't paying it and um, I've got the strimmer um, which is over here let me grab it for you it don't look like a bad little strimmer to be fair again for what it is it's a hobby strimmer um, curve shaft and it is a 2000 and, I don't know, can't see, 2000 and, it says free. Um, but it's got compression, that I do know. Um, and it, it's, I think it, it's all sort of there. I think it will go, but I'm not forking out, I'm not forking out for 24 pound for a new pork oil assembly. That's not happening. You don't pay that for a Briggs and Stratton three and a half classic pork oil assembly. So I don't know quite where they're getting the parts from. But so if you want to find me one of these as well, people, this is a um, Pro Grass Trimmer 24cc. It's a Pro 24cc SGTA. So if anyone wants to find me one of those at a cheap price that I can pick up, that'd be cool as well. So that's it for today. Um, really enjoyed it actually. Had a good uh, good session getting down and getting dirty. Don't forget my wish list is downstairs in the um, description if you feel the need to buy me something for my channel. Um, apart from that, don't forget to um, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, comment you know where to stick them. And if it's your first time in watching, don't forget to whack the old bell, hit the red button, and that'll tell you when I've released another video. Until next time people, don't forget, take it easy.